looking in the ditch up ahead, Mr. Dixon. You better have a look at it. Yeah, I agree with you, Sergeant. You better take a man with you. Check the wagon and the area on both sides of the road. Corporal. Riding for so many hours, it's just nice to be able to stand up for a little while. Yes, I know how you feel, Countess, but I must ask you and your brother to stay in the coach. Why? Because some silly old wagon went off into the ditch? You worry too much, Mr. Dixon. Elena, that is his job. I know, and he takes it very seriously. Looks like you got trouble. Nothing near a blacksmith and ten dollars couldn't fix. All I'm short of is the blacksmith and the ten dollars. Sorry we can't give you a hand with that, but we can't spare the time. Good luck. Thank you. You see, they're coming back. All that worry for nothing. When do we get to the Ponderosa? Noon. A little after that. Just what it looks like, wagon with a busted wheel, one man trying to fix it. Both sides of the road are clean. Good. All right, let's move out. Yes, sir. Move out. It worked very well. You stopped the coach where you said you would. I give you that. You saw the jewels the Countess was wearing. Gigos. Could have been beer bottle glass. Diamonds and rubies. Worth more money than you ever saw. Now, wait a minute, Peters. No matter what the Count and Countess have with them, or how much it's worth, you ain't never gonna get close to it. Not with those troopers and the Ponderosa ranch hands in your way. <laughs> so that's the end of that idea. You're wrong, Hardesty. It's only the beginning. is going to show them to the guest rooms. The guest rooms are ready, aren't they? All ready. Four, five, day now. Yeah, good. Hey, good. here they come. Detail, Alexis? I'm Ben Cartwright. How do you do? It's an honor. 
honor to have you here, sir. Thank you. And this is my sister, Countess Elena. Countess Elena. Oh, please, not so formal. I am Elena, and this is Alexis. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, these are my, my sons. Hoss. Hi, ma'am. How do you do? And uh, Joseph. How are you? How do you do? How do you do? Nice to see you. Hi. Oh, and this is Mr. Dixon, the United States Secret Service. Mr. Conrad? Mr. Dixon? Nice of you to be here. Uh, how else would you look after the horses and the troopers? Uh, this way, please. Well, the house is so right. It belongs here as if it grew like the trees. Well, as a matter of fact, it did somewhat. When your father was foreman here, it was about half the size it is now. We've added considerably to it since then. Speaking of my father, Stub Jones sends his best regards. Stub Jones. Does your father still think of himself as Stub Jones? Yes, he does. <laughs> <laughs> he still calls himself a cowboy. Oh, gosh, there's so many things I'd like to ask you about your father, but all that will have to wait until you change it. Uh, Hop Singh, will you show our guests to their rooms? This most happy occasion for Hop Singh. This way, please. San Francisco was a headache. The Countess decided that she wanted to see Chinatown. What she didn't realize was that everyone in Chinatown wanted to see her. <laughs> we very nearly had a had a riot. <laughs> we got the troopers all quartered and everything's taken care of, Paul. Good. Mr. Dixon was just telling us what it's like to travel with nobility. Yes, I've been waiting for a chance to uh, discuss the problems here. Mm. I think this is as good a time as any. What, uh, what kind of problems do you mean? Well, the Count and Countess are in this country as guests of the President. Their personal safety is of great concern to Washington, and it's also my responsibility. If anything, anything, gentlemen, should happen to either of them, it could cause an international uproar. Hmm. Yes, I could uh, understand that, I think, but uh, surely you're not expecting anything to happen. <laughs> The Countess has brought her um, jewels. A collection valued more than a quarter of a million dollars. Mm. It's been reported in every paper in the country. A fat target for every thief who can read. Well, uh, let's see now. We, uh, we have a small save here. That will help some. But we'll also need um, round-the-clock guards. And uh, with your permission, Mr. Cartwright, I'd like to check out um, every entrance in the house, take a look at the outbuildings, everything. Oh, fine, certainly. Horse and little Joe will show you around. You bet, any time you're ready. Good. If you uh, would be good enough to put this in the safe, certainly. we can do it now. in the cluster of trees and rocks. I want one of you standing guard watch every minute. I keep the horses out of sight and stay off the skyline. And no campfire till it's too dark to see the smoke. Now listen, with the Count and Countess of the Ponderosa, this whole country's gonna be swarmed with troopers and lawmen. Yes, they'll question everyone they see. That's why I want you to stay out of sight. What are you going to be doing while we're holed up like prairie dogs? Riding into Virginia City to get what I need to make you all rich. I'll be back tomorrow night. Now go on, up the hill. Yes, 
say when your father was foreman here at the Ponderosa, he knew every inch of this territory. And he knew every steer and every heifer, too. Superb cattle, Mr. Cartwright. Now I understand why my father wanted me to visit the Ponderosa. Well, yeah, if you want to take over his job as advisor to the Russian cattle industry, he had a good idea sending you over here. See what cattle raising is like in this part of the world. It's just beautiful. Well, we think so. There's a lot more to see, too. One dollar. Even Peters. I've been thinking about that, too. He said he'd be here tonight. The night ain't over yet. He'll be here. He's a foreigner, and I don't trust him. There's no reason not to trust him. We've done pretty good since he's been running things. Why don't you shut up and bet? Two dollars. Right. Could be a sellout. He could be telling the sheriff where we are. Why would he? For the reward money. Makes a deal. Sheriff gets the four of us, and he gets a pocket full of money and walks away free. All those jewels waiting for us, you think he's going to settle for three or four thousand dollars? Two thousand. I looked at the wanted posters in front of the sheriff's office. That's all you're worth. 500 apiece, dead or alive. You know, there's one thing I can depend on harvesting. As soon as I'm out of sight, you try to take over. And use some of that food to fix my plate. Yes, sir. A man's got a right to think of his own neck. There were ten of us when I joined up. Only five left. Three of the men we lost were good friends of mine. Violent death is one of the risks of our trade. Look, risks I don't mind. Banks and stages are fine. But this Ponderosa thing, you want to get us all killed? Nobody asks you to join us. Saddle right out any time you like. Here you go, boss. Yeah. We wrestle our own grub. Why do you wait on him like that? Because I told him to. As long as he rides with me, he takes orders from me. High and mighty, aren't you? You think you're better than we are. Well, I'll tell you something, mister. You ain't. Sit down, hardest to shut up. Don't you tell me what to do from now on. <laughs> you try that again, hardesty. I'll kill you. Up something interesting with Virginia City. Read that. Listen to this. The jewel collection is said by experts who have seen it to be worth more than a quarter of a million dollars. A quarter of a million dollars. That's right, Horace. You ride with us now or not? <laughs> 
I'm in. For a share of that kind of money, I'll ride even with you. But tomorrow, I ride to the Ponderosa. Ponderosa? I don't know what you have in mind, but I'm riding with you. Hmm. Well, I ride it alone. There isn't that much money in the whole world. Not to just in money, Slim. I've got an old score to settle. I'm not going to miss the chance. Stranger, something we can do for you? If this is the Ponderosa, yes. You're at the right place. I've come a long way to see my old friends, Countess Elena and Count Alexis. Your old friends? Well, who are you? Prince Vladimir Pavelovich Preznov. At your service. This is a prince. Vlad! Oh, how good it is to see you. You don't know how good it is to see you again. <laughs> what a wonderful meal. How wonderful it is to see you here. Your father said you were someplace in America, but we'd given up all hope of seeing you. When I read you were coming to the Ponderosa, I rode day and night. <laughs> and you'll stay as long as we do? Well, of course you will. We have plenty of room here. I'm in your debt, sir. No, at all. It's our pleasure. Oh, I think we're being urged to uh, move into the living room and have our brandy. More better. Everybody more comfortable. <laughs> that prince moves pretty quick, don't he, little brother? Kind of seen that eyes for nobody else but him. Say that again. A toast to our reunion, your warm welcome, and to beauty. Here, here. <laughs> Mr. Cartwright, your brandy is as superb as your hospitality. <laughs> Thank you, Your Highness. No, call me Vladi, please. In all America, you and your sons are the only people who know I was born a prince. I should like to keep it that way. But you are still a prince, aren't you? Well, of course he is. Oh, not here, Elena. All that was long ago and far away. Vladi was the youngest colonel in the Tsar's army. He won the medal for valor in the Crimea. Purely... Accidental, I assure you. Vladi was also known as one of the finest horsemen in Russia. Yes, you remember when you won the Cossacks Cup in St. Petersburg? Oh, barely, Elena, all that's happened in a different world. The Winter Festival? The Tsar's Palace? A birthday ball. Remember, Vladi, that's the first time you ever danced with me. Yes, I remember. Magnificent uniforms, glittering decorations, beautiful women. 
and you outshone them all. Mind if I join you? Not at all. You seem uh, rather interested in the prince. Any special reason? He's what he says he is. Alexis tells me he and Elena have uh, known him since they were children. But he is an unexpected visitor. You do well in the Secret Service, Mr. Cartwright. Paul, well, I'm going to go out and see if the troopers need anything. Fine. If you'll excuse me, I think I'll join him. Countess, would you care for some more? No, thank you. Please. Well, Vladdy, it sounds like you've been over in this country quite a while. I thought a prince had to stay around home and keep acting like a prince all the time. Only if you are a firstborn son. Under the law of primogeniture, the first son inherits the estates and the responsibilities. But I am a second son. I was not burdened with that. I was free to seek a career in the military or to roam the world. And you picked the military? Until the fighting was over. Then I decided to seek Dame Fortune in other lands. <laughs> Thus far, she has been a fickle and elusive jade. Don't you miss your home? Home. I'd forgotten how good that word could sound. You seem to have forgotten an awful lot. But not everything. I have something in my saddlebag I'd like to show you. If you'll excuse me. Certainly. Alexis, time we had a little talk. Of course, come in. Come in. No, uh, Vladi, I really wasn't surprised to find you here. I knew you'd catch up with us sooner or later. <laughs> and this brief encounter can be most pleasant. As long as you remember, it must be brief. I would have it no other way. <laughs> oh, you still have great charm. You're a liar and a rogue, but you have great charm. That performance downstairs. Prince Vladi, second son. Too proud to live on his brother's charity, too much the dashing hussar to remain in uniform once there was no more war to fight, no headlong charge to lead. <laughs> you did it very well. You flatter me. We both know that a second son does not inherit wealth, but he can marry it. My sister is a wealthy woman. She's also romantic. She was once very fond of you. And you're afraid she still is? Don't worry. All that is long since dead. Yes, well, she doesn't know about the gambling debts. The looted mess fund. The hushed-up court-martial, which very nearly ended with you facing a firing squad. Twenty crimes you were charged with. Twenty? No. Twenty-one. Twenty-one. 
Well, she doesn't know about that. But she will tell her. Only if I must. With great delight, I'm sure. No, Vladi. With great regret. Because you see, it would hurt her deeply. And I'd like to spare her that if I can. Shall we say three days? And then you remember urgent business elsewhere. Alexis. Has it occurred to you I might have changed? Oh. You have? Yes. In the years since you last saw me, I've changed. I'm now a cowboy. I work with my hands. I'm as penniless as I was in St. Petersburg, but now I'm free to come and go as I please. And I take orders from no one. Well, Vlad, if it's money that you need, I certainly can... No. I don't want your money. Now, that's interesting. Perhaps you have changed. That's Elena's locket you have there, isn't it? You were going to show it to her to prove how much you've loved her all through the years of your exile. Three days. Winter is the time to be in St. Petersburg. There are snow palaces and the tinkling of sleigh bells. And slush. And wind and frostbite. The water in the basin freezes before you have a chance to shave. That's one of the reasons that uh, so many of my countrymen wear beards. <laughs> Don't tell all these nice people such big fat fibs. I'll tell them about the day the ladies of the court came to the ranch to visit you. Oh, don't you dare. <laughs> she was being considered as a lady in waiting. These two bristling dowagers came to the ranch to give their final approval. Yes, my darling brother sent them down to the branding corral. They arrived just in time to see Elena... Rope, tie, and brand a calf. Superb performance, but hardly the thing to qualify her as one of the delicate ladies of the court. Oh, what did the two dowagers say? Oh, nothing. They fainted. <laughs> Excuse me. upstairs to get something you wanted to show me. A trinket. I couldn't find it. And so you walk right past me and come out here. I remember a time that you used to like to show me the stars. Tell me the names of them. Look, there's Andromeda. Oh. Andromeda is behind you. You were so happy a few moments ago. Now you've turned to ice. What happened, Lottie? 
was remembering too. The night we looked at the stars from your father's garden. I asked you to marry me. And I said I would. And the next day you were on your way to Paris. Well, you know why. You talked it over with your parents and decided you could do better than a penniless prince. Oh, Flabby, that's not true. You swore to love me forever, no matter what your parents said or did. Brave words, I remember them well. Forever turned out to be a little less than 12 hours. My mother and dad had heard things. Gossip. And they wanted me to be very sure, and they, they asked me to wait for three months without seeing you. Then if we hadn't changed our minds, they wouldn't have objected. Search the ground. See if there's anybody else. Yes, sir. the big man himself. Get down, pour yourself a drink. Slim Rivers is dead. Oh. Sorry to hear that. What's he doing at the Ponderosa? Oh, I sent him in to see if he needed any help. We were wondering what you were doing about the jewels. The jewel chest is kept locked away in a safe. 24 hours a day. You make it sound so tough, Your Highness. <laughs> you see, I was at the Ponderosa, too. Andy Peters, a real genuine 14 karat prince. Countess and you were gonna get married one day. She still seemed pretty fond of you. So I'll tell you, we won't worry about that safe. Not when you got the countess there in your pocket. Thank <laughs> you. 
body. Still a wild man. That horse of his puts his foot in a hole, he'll be a sorry one. Ah, Alexis. What a wonderful day for riding. We wondered what had become of you. I awakened early. I thought if that man in the barnyard last night was truly an outlaw, he would have friends. I rode out looking for tracks. By yourself? That's a good way to get killed. That wouldn't occur to Vladdy. He used to lead charges into the jaws of enemy artillery. But the little man in the barnyard was alone. I searched uh, from this grove to those hills. Nothing. Saves us the trouble. You ready to go back, sir? On a day like this, when I came out to ride? No, what about you, Vladdy? We'll ride, of course. Get up. There is at least one advantage to being a second son. I'm not burdened with an escort. I envy you that. Everywhere I go, it seems the view is flooded with soldiers. Suppose we take them up a little, huh? Show them how Cossacks ride. As we used to do at home? Yeah. Oxen house! Confusion to the troopers. <laughs> Not very nice, perhaps, but I can't remember when I've enjoyed myself more. Well, we'd better start back. Well, I just yet. I have some friends I want you to meet. What do you hope to gain by this? Elena's jewels. And a great deal of personal satisfaction. You know, Vladi, I really hoped that you had changed. But I suppose once a thief, always a thief. Spoken like a true first son. All I want back from you is a little of what I lost. You know what this will do to Elena? She's one of the few, perhaps the only one, who still believes in you. What she did to me, I want to see her hurt. like the glorious days of our youth again. Alexis and I were the fox, and the troopers were the confused hounds. Alexis and I separated, which is part of the game. I lost him. But there's no need to be concerned. I'm sure he'll find his way back soon. Well, sure, but you've been back for more than an hour already. He could have had an accident. His horse could have thrown him. He's the car with a broken leg. Mr. Carter, Alexis is a superb horseman. He doesn't know this country. It's very easy for a horse to step into a gopher hole again. Since you're so worried, I'll join you on a search. We'll look where I last saw you. I think we should. Oh, wait a minute. Mr. Cartwright, that area is being covered by my men. 
Did you happen to see anyone else while you were out riding? No. Oh, I did. Well, that's at least some comfort. <laughs> Try again as soon as troopers can saddle some fresh mounts. You saddle up my horse and go along with you. Yes. Uh, no, Mr. Cartwright, I'd rather you stay here with the Countess. Back to the ranch. They got Alexi. French carriage pistols. Now, I once owned a pair like these. They were very popular with friends who were challenged to a duel and had a choice of weapons. Mm. That's because they're so inaccurate. Yeah. Now, even at 20 paces, you couldn't hit a barn let alone a man. But both parties could fire. Honor satisfied. No blood drawn. <laughs> Still no word of Alexis? Not much yet. But he used to get lost off, and you remember? And sooner or later, he came home. This is strange country. Oh, yes, but the North Star is still in the same place. He always used that to guide himself. Well, I suppose you're right. I'd like to lock these in the chest if I may. Yes, certainly. Guns. Why do they fascinate men so much? I suppose because they make such... Nice, loud noises. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, you won't mind if I keep this for a minute. I want to show Vladdy something that's in it. Oh, sure. Oh, excuse me. My, uh, most prized possession. You remember? Yes, I remember. It's your medal for valor given to you by the Tsar himself. And you gave it to me in place of an engagement ring. And you kept it all this time? Because it was given to me by the only man I've ever loved or ever will. I told you that in a letter I wrote the morning I left for Paris. Letter? I had no letter. I know that now. That's why you've been so remote. You thought I'd turn my back on you and ran away. There was a letter, Flatty. I swear it. I gave it to Alexis, and he promised me faithfully he'd mail it. And he didn't? Yes, that could be. Alexis never liked me much. Oh, he liked you. Oh, I was not the man for his sister. When I came back, you were gone, and I, I couldn't find out why or where. I just knew that you had gotten into some kind of trouble. Come home with me, Vladdy. Oh, I can't. No matter how much I want to, I can't go home. But why? 
say, whatever you did has long ago been forgotten and forgiven. Helena, it is not that simple. Well, then, I stay here. I stay here or anywhere. We can start a new life together in a new country. You would give up your family, your rank for me? Of course. A penniless man? <laughs> you don't know what you're saying, Elena. Are you not penniless? You have these. They're my gift to you. It's enough. It's more than enough for a new start anywhere. It's too late, Elena. No matter how much I want, it cannot be. Not here, not anywhere. But you do love me. Yes. In spite of what I thought you did. always loved you. Well, then it can be. You have news of Alexis? Yes, Countess. Bad news. The, uh, the man that we, we found here last night, he apparently was part of a gang. They have Alexis and they want your jewels, or... They'll... they'll kill him? Yes, Your Highness. Well, give them the jewels. How are they to be delivered? One man rides out alone at moonrise. He rides straight east until he stops. If he's followed, the Count will be killed. I am your messenger. I'm afraid not. The Count's safety is my responsibility. But it is my fault if it hadn't been for that foolish game of fox and hounds. Sorry. It's my job. You gave me the jewels, Elena. Tell them that. With all my heart and all my love, I ask that I be the messenger. It's Vladdy's wish. And it's mine. Moonrise in an hour. I shall be ready. Hurry back, Vladdy, please. Until I see you next, remember that I love you. say they'll release the count when they get the jewels. Outlaws promise. Harder to be counted on. My sons and I know this country probably better than anyone else. I think we could track Prince Vladi without being seen. I suggest you do it, then. Yeah. Horses saddling and horses now.
The moon's been up an hour. Where is he? You don't hear too good. He's riding in now. All right, scatter. Chest on the ground and step back. Not till you cut him loose. No. He stays tied. Three guns say he stays tied. Three guns. Finally talk them around to your side. Hmm? We decided we could use your share. Now, Prince, put the chest on the ground and step back. which a lame did not have some She won't. Thank you very much. Ben, thank you for everything. It's a bit too heavy here. I uh, hope you have a safe journey back. And give your father my very best regards. Tell him I'd like to see him. Thank you. 